Have you ever caught yourself following certain stereotypes even if you believe they're not true? For example, that women aren't as good as men at tech or maths, or that women should associate with warmer things and a more nurturing leadership style, or anything to do with race and racial stereotypes. As much as we want to get rid of these stereotypes, some of them keep on following us. Why? Because they're the result of subconscious or implicit biases. These stereotypes have been somehow ingrained on our subconscious minds and we are not even aware of them sometimes. Biases can cloud our judgment and affect our decision making, especially when it comes to decisions that we need to make on the spot. They may lead to discrimination or unfair outcomes for certain groups of people, even if we don't want to do it intentionally. There are many potential outcomes of our biases, but they're especially dangerous when it comes to building technology. By unintentionally passing our biases onto the algorithms we create, we might be creating solutions and tools that discriminate against certain groups of people. And unfortunately, we can see the results of biases in tech and the everyday tech we use already. For example, certain technologies like facial recognition discriminate against people of color, older people, and women. I have a separate video with five examples of how tech can be racist, which I will leave a link to in the description. The point is, we need to be able to make decisions and create technology that is free from biases. Our technological solutions should treat everyone equally and be inclusive, solving problems for people instead of creating more of them. It takes conscious effort to manage our biases, but I believe it's the only way to treat everyone equally and be objective. So let's see how we can do that. You're not a bad person for having biases. Everyone has them. Studies show that they act as shortcuts in our brains to help us process information by categorizing it and linking certain beliefs to those categories. This allows us to make snap decisions on the spot that can help protect us. From the standpoint of evolution, that is one of the things that probably has enabled us to survive as species. But as you know, those primal responses can take over our brains sometimes, and the fight or flight response is a great example of that. I see biases in the same category. They're normal and theoretically they're there to help us survive. However, in the context of modern life, most of these primal responses don't serve us as well. Fight or flight response is my biggest enemy when it comes to public speaking. I have a separate video on the topic and how to calm yourself down in those moments. Uh, I will leave the link to it in the description. Biases and those category shortcuts cloud our decision-making process, making us more prone to following certain stereotypes subconsciously. Everyone has biases, you can't avoid them, and it's very likely that you're not even aware of them. They're called subconscious for a reason. The real question is what you're going to do about those biases. Jennifer Eberhardt, who is a social psychologist and a professor in the Department of Psychology at Stanford University, has been studying biases for a while. In fact, she wrote a book about them called Biased. In that book, she says that understanding your biases is step number one to managing them. So let's look at how you can become more aware of what biases you may have. As we've mentioned, they're subconscious, so this step might be hard if you're trying to do that by simply reflecting on your actions, on your past actions. Luckily, there are tests that you can do which can help you determine your biases through association. The first time I did one of those tests uh, was during my onboarding at Google, and it was very eye-opening. Some of my biases went against my conscious beliefs, which is pretty crazy. How can my conscious and subconscious beliefs be so different from each other? But then when I reflected on some of my snap decisions in the past, the subconscious always won, which is kind of scary, right? So are you curious to find out what subconscious biases you may have? I'm going to link a free test by Stanford University, the same test that I did at Google during my onboarding, in the description. This test has a ton of different categories you can choose from, and I think the more you explore, the more categories you choose from, the better. Take note of your results and keep them in mind the next time those biases may come into play. 
Jennifer Eberhardt says that step number two is to slow down. Next time you're about to make a quick snap decision, stop and pause. Remember, we're especially vulnerable to our implicit biases when making quick decisions. So give yourself some time to think about it and reflect on whether you're being objective or if your biases are clouding your judgment. Doing this will help you see your biases in action and this awareness will help you manage their effect on your decisions. Jennifer Eberhardt says that eliminating biases altogether might not be an option, but managing them and making this reflection a habit is absolutely possible. Other sources, I'll link them in the description, suggest to also trying to intentionally becoming more empathetic towards the group that you may be subconsciously discriminating against. For example, if you find that you have biases against older people or people of a certain race or people of a cer certain sexual orientation, try to understand what their experiences are like. And you can do that by following more people from that demographic on social media, connecting with them in person, reading books, watching movies, basically really trying to get into their shoes. The more you do your research, the more diversity you will see amongst that demographic. And the more stories you learn about, the more empathetic you will be towards that group of people. Yes, your subconscious biases might not go away as a result, but that empathy will help you make more mindful decisions. It will help you stop and pause and consider the stories that you've learned about, and hopefully it will make you more objective when making decisions. It will help you manage your biases and become a better, more objective decision maker and human. Let me know what your thoughts are on the topic and if you have any other techniques or recommendations in terms of resources and further reading to share, please do so in the comments. I'm also super curious about what you get from that implicit biases test that I've linked in the description. Uh, so let me know if those results may have surprised you. Like this video if you've enjoyed it, share with a human that you love because let's be honest, we all have biases. And of course, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. We can also be friends on other social media. You can find me as Coding Blonde. Have a wonderful time of the day you're currently experiencing. Bye.